Oh, you just bought a brand new camera and now you're ready to get started. You're ready to bring the drip. You open this baby up, give it a quick look, toss those instructions in the trash cause you are a boss. And then, why is it so dark? Why is it so bright? What is going on? What's this button on the side do? You know what? I'm autoing everything. So you decide to YOLO it and just put everything on automatic. YOLO! Don't worry about it, pimp, cause Sky Money gotcha. Today, we are going over camera basics. Camera basics for a boss. That is a sick car. Sick. Oh. Oh man, where did the sun go? Holy cow, it went away quick too. You know what? Doesn't matter. Let's get into some camera basics. I think it's a good day for it since it's about to start storming. Yeah, camera basics. But how sick was that Ferrari though? Holy cow. Ah, one, one day, one day. Yo, what's up guys, it's Sky, and today we are actually talking about camera basics. And no matter what kind of camera you use, whether you're shooting video or photography, it's always a good idea to know the basics. Whether it's with a DJI Osmo pocket camera, to action cameras like a GoPro, it's always good to know the basics. So in today's camera basics, we are going over frame rates, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So if that sounds good to you guys, hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you are new because you are a boss and we are on our way to 10K. And if you are already subscribed, you know you are a ninja boss. And I love your face. So first things first, no matter what camera you're on, let's switch that auto to manual like a boss. And now on most cameras today, auto is pretty good, especially when you're on the run and gun, doing guerrilla shooting, whatever you need to do to get the shot. It's not terrible. And I was on a shoot one day and a coworker actually told me this and it just stuck to my brain like glue. And what he said was, I don't know, sky, sky money, hold up. To unlock the beast, always shoot in manual. You can shoot in manual on a cheap camera and it'll look better than one of these $40,000 cameras we have around us shooting in auto. Boss. Because you know what? He was right. From my experience, manual has been superior every time over automatic. So switch it to manual. Rates and why does it affect me? Glad you asked, Pippin. Simply put, frame rate is how many frames you're shooting in one second of that video. And I don't really know how else to explain it other than that. But the main reason you want to know this is because depending on what you're shooting and the situation, some frame rates you kind of want to avoid. But the guy, I just shoot everything in 60 and call it a day. What? Ah, no, Pippin. No, Pippin. No. So when shooting something regular like this, for example, I'm sitting down talking to a camera or I'm walking talking to a camera. Just any sort of regular situation. You want to shoot at 24 frames a second. 24 frames a second is the industry standard when it comes to filming because it just hands down looks the best for normal situations. So I remember the first television shoot I was on, I grabbed the camera and I was like, oh snap, 30 frames a second? I'm shooting everything at 30 frames a second. Bunk this. That was a big mistake because it just did not look natural. And that's because for some reason, 24 frames a second just brings that drip to your eyeballs. And we're not talking about eye drops. But yeah, so 24 frames a second just brings this natural motion to your eyes, which is great for your videos. I mean, have you ever wondered why soap operas look kind of funny? It's because they're shooting at 60 frames a second. I don't know why, but yeah. So now let's just say you want to capture something in slow motion. Then you definitely use 60 or 120 frames a second. Because when you slow it down in a 24 frame project, It'll look as smooth as butter. Like, smooth as butter on your butt cheek smooth. That's smooth. So when I shoot my B-roll and I want to slow part of that B-roll down, I shoot in 120 frames per second. Just so that I can slow it down and speed it back up. And now, at the end of the day, you can shoot in whatever you want, Pippin. It, it's fine. But if you're trying to have the most natural motion and the drip to your videos, I recommend shooting in 24 frames a second. So shoot 24 frames a second in regular situations, and if you wanna slow something down, shoot in 60 to 120. Now, I mean, unless you're feeling dangerous, go ahead and shoot in 240, why not? But only if you bring in the drip and you plan on slowing that footage down. And now since we touch on the topic of motion blur, let's talk about shutter speed. And now remember, you want to keep that natural, eye-catching Hollywood motion blur when you're filming. To do this, you want to follow the 180 degree rule and have your shutter speed double the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, your shutter speed should be 1 over 50. 
double the frame rate. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, trying to get them sweet slow motion shots like a boss. And your shutter speed is going to be 1 over 120. Which means that's how fast that shutter is opening and closing, letting the sensor be exposed to the image as you're shooting. So what is shutter speed? you asked. Shutter speed is basically how long your shutter is opening and closing. Having the shutter speed too low is having that sensor exposed to the image for a longer period of time, which will then give you this everything is awesome effect or dream effect kind of look. Lit! If your shutter speed is too high, then you'll get this kind of jittery, unnatural, intense, saving private Ryan kind of effect. So high shutter speed, no motion blur at all, kind of unnatural. High shutter speed <laughs> and low shutter speed. I'm doing my wiggle dance. Now, unless you're using these different effects, try to avoid super low shutter speeds and super high shutter speeds. Because again, it's really hard to watch because it's just so unnatural to the eye. So try to always go with the 180 degree rule and whatever your frame rate is, just double your shutter speed. Doing this will help you get great cinematic footage as well as that boss motion blur. Cause you a boss. And now let's move on to ISO. ISO, simply put, is just fake light. Things are a little too bright, drop that ISO. Things are a little too dark, bump up that ISO. And now the good thing about most cameras nowadays is that, is that you can actually limit the max ISO on most cameras. Now, although it's simple, the thing to remember with ISO is that the more you bump that ISO up, the more noise and grain you're gonna get into your footage. And with a lot of noise and footage, it, that, that's not gangster. It's not gonna look good. That's not gangster. So you wanna make sure you stay at your camera's sweet spot. Now with smaller cameras, it's usually 100 or 200 ISO. So you wanna find your camera's sweet spot for your ISO. And now depending on the camera, each sweet spot is different. For example, for smaller cameras like the DJI Pocket 1, DJI Pocket 2, GoPros, DJI Osmo Action, those cameras usually have a sweet spot of one to 300 ISO. Anything higher, you start to see the graining and the noise. Which is why when I film on a DJI Pocket 2, I actually leave my max ISO at about 200. And if I don't have the light, well, I don't have the light. But yes, very important, ISO is fake light. And the more and more you bump up that ISO, the more noise you're gonna get into your footage. And now some cameras are actually great with the ISO, like the Sony a7S III. This camera is a beast in low light. And this is like legit without the grain or the noise. Like for real, no joke, this camera could actually see better than my eyeballs could see at night. So again, it just depends on the camera. But for the most part, you wanna keep that ISO as low as you can. But if you're in extreme dark situations, bump that ISO, just expect noise and grain. Moving on! Next, let's talk about aperture. And now for aperture, this one can be a bit tricky, but it doesn't have to be. And now to me, this is actually where it gets fun because your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed all work together. So now, without making things too complicated, I'll just put it like this. The higher the aperture, the less light your lens is letting into the camera, which will let you see more detail of your footage. Now, lowering the aperture will let you focus more on the subject and blur out the background. And now, if you let in a lot of light, most likely you're gonna have to bump up your shutter speed, and that's where an ND filter comes into play. Because without the ND filter, either you'll have to bump up the shutter speed really high, or everything's gonna be blown out. So that's why we get ND filters and being able to focus on our subject without blowing them out. So a perfect example is when I'm out vlogging and I'm just out and about, I usually like to have my aperture a little high so that you guys can see a lot of the background. But when I'm in a room and I'm like this doing my sit down talks with you guys, bringing the sauce, I like to keep my aperture as low as possible. One reason being because I'm in a room and it's just not that flattering in here. And two, because you can actually focus strictly on me. I can strictly take all the focus off the background and leave it on me. And then reason number three is because I know you guys are a bunch of ninja bosses and I don't need you calling me out on my messy YouTube studio. So yes, blurred background we go. So right now, my setup on a Sony a7S III is I have an ND filter on the lens. My shutter speed is one over 50. My ISO is 250, but depending on where the light is, because I'm using window light, I usually change it, but at the moment, it's at 250. And then I have my f-stop set to 1.4. And now, if I wanted to show everything around me, I would simply bump up that f-stop, leave my shutter speed at 1 over 50, and lower my ISO. Wait, did I, that's, wait, did I say lower or raise? I meant raise my ISO. You can still see I'm keeping my nice motion blur because I'm still keeping my shutter speed at 1 over 50. My ISO is at 6400 because I raised my aperture, letting in less light, so my ISO had to bump up. And my aperture is set at F11. All right, and now back to normal. Nice blurred background, that, that nice bokeh. I've missed you. 
Now remember, aperture also depends on what kind of lens you're using. For example, prime lenses could usually let in more light, while zoom lenses let in less light. I mean, I haven't seen not one zoom lens that could hit like a 1.4. Yeah, prove, I mean, if you know of one, let me know, but I haven't seen any. And now, super quick side note, with smaller cameras, the aperture is not adjustable which is why a bunch of people use ND filters and other accessories to help them keep that cinematic natural motion blur in the footage for their smaller cameras. Because sometimes it's just a little bit harder to get that cinematic footage without having control of the aperture, which isn't a bad thing. You just have to be more of a boss and pay more attention to your shutter speed. And yes, you are all done. You have graduated Camera Basics 101. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, leave a like. And if you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button because you are a boss. And we're trying to get to that 10K. So subscribe if you are new. If you want more camera tips and tricks, let me know in the comments below. Also, just let me know if this video has helped you out at all. But that is it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. And now get your butt cheeks out there and go shoot some cinematic shots. But again, guys, thanks again for watching. You know what to do if you want some more of this face then check out some of these videos down here. But until then, I will see you in the next video.